Photography carries a power that holds up under the relentless swirl of today's saturated media world because photographs emulate the way that our mind freezes a significant moment. This is an icon of National Geographic, an Afghan refugee taken by Steve McCurry. This is a jet landing at San Francisco by Bruce Dale. Uh, he mounted a camera on the tail. A poetic image for a story on Tolstoy by Sam Abel. Pygmies in the DRC by Randy Olson. I love this photograph because it reminds me of uh, Degas' uh, bronze sculptures, The Little Dancer. A polar bear swimming in the Arctic by Paul Nicklin. Polar bears need ice to be able to move back and forth. They're not very good swimmers. These are camels moving across the Rift Valley in Africa, photographed by Chris Johns. Shot straight down, so these are the shadows of the camels. This is a rancher in Texas by William Albert Allard, a great portraitist. And Jane Goodall making her own special connection, photographed by Nick Nichols. This is a soap disco in Spain, photographed by David Allen Harvey. These are sea lions uh, in Australia doing their own dance by David Dubillet. And this is a comet captured by Dr. Ewan Mason. And finally, the bow of the Titanic without movie stars, photographed by Emery Kristoff. And this is what a photograph taps into when it makes its own powerful connection to a viewer. A cross sample of some remarkable images taken by some of the world's greatest photojournalists working at the very top of their craft, except one. This photograph was taken by Dr. Ewan Mason in New Zealand last year, and it was submitted and published in National Geographic. Every one of us has at least one or two great photographs in them. But to be a great photojournalist, you have to have more than just one or two great photographs in you. You've got to be able to make them all the time. But even more importantly, you need to know how to create a visual narrative. You need to know how to tell a story. So I'm going to share with you some coverages that I feel demonstrate the storytelling power of photography. Photographer Nick Nichols went to document a very small and relatively unknown wildlife sanctuary in Chad called Zacoma. The lion having a late night snack, notice he's got a broken tooth. And a crocodile walks up a riverbank towards its den. I love this little bit of water that comes off the back of his tail. But the centerpiece species of Zacoma are the elephants. It's one of the largest intact herds uh, in this part of Africa. Here's a photograph shot in moonlight, something that digital photography has made a big difference for. But it was with the elephants that this story pivoted. Nick, along with researcher um, Dr. Michael Fay, collared the matriarch of the herd. They named her Annie. Annie had been killed, along with 20 members of her herd. Now let's go over to India. Sometimes you can tell a broad story in a focused way. So the only way to tell a story is with the sweeping picture. It's that Brian and Randy created are among the best to capture both the human and natural devastation of overfishing. Here in a photo by Brian, a seemingly crucified shark is caught up in a gill net off of Baja. On land, Randy Olson photographed a makeshift fish market in Africa where the remains of filleted fish were sold to the locals, the main parts having already been sent to Europe. And here in China, Randy shot a jellyfish market. As prime food sources are depleted, the harvest goes deeper into the oceans and brings in more such sources of protein. This is called fishing down the food chain. Leopard seals do mostly, is they eat penguins. Uh, you know of the March of the Penguins, this is sort of the munch of the penguins. Photography can also compel us to confront issues that are potentially distressing and controversial. Finally, often fitted with high-tech prosthesis, they exit the medical system and attempt to regain their pre-war lives. Jim took what could have been a straight-up medical science story and gave it a human dimension that touched our readers deeply. Now these stories are great examples of how photography can be used to address some of our most important topics. But there are also times when photographers simply encounter things that are, when it comes down to it, just plain fun. I believe that photography can make a real connection to people and can be employed as a positive agent for understanding the challenges and opportunities facing our world today.